Hi, good evening, guys. Welcome to the Maximize Your Life Bible Study. I am Minister Marcus, the pastor, leader, founder, visionary, whatever you want to call me, of the God Movement. And uh, what I do on Wednesday nights is I try to give something for those of us who want to live the Christian life, who are trying to live the Christian life, or those who are um, have questions about the Christian life. I try to make things a little bit clearer for us to, to live out our faith and to strengthen our faith and enhance our relationship with God. And so I do this every week on Wednesday nights at 830. So just in case you missed your Bible study, which we all are on quarantine. So I feel like this is an easy, simple way for you to still learn about God and keep your faith intact and kind of, you know what I'm saying? So with that, I'm not going to prolong too much of the time. Uh, tonight, I'm very excited about sharing uh, some principles about God and helping you to understand him a little bit better uh, while enhancing your walk with him. And so tonight's lesson is coming from Matthew chapter 5 beginning at verse number 14. And I believe we're just going to read about three verses, 14, 15, and 16. 15, well, verse, I mean, Matthew chapter 5, <laughs> verse 14, 15, and 16. All right. And uh, I'm reading out of uh, my NIV study Bible. Uh, normally, I'll be using my life application, but this is just one of my different study Bibles. Uh, it is New International Version. Uh, so I do encourage you guys to get you a Bible that you can understand as well as a King James Version. So where you can do your word studies or whatever. Uh, but tonight, here we go. Matthew chapter 5. We're going to begin in verse number 14. It says, you are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people put a lamp, neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everybody in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good works and praise or give glory to your father which is in heaven. And so for a thought tonight, I thought I thought uh, the thought came to me. I thought it was pretty cool. Let your light shine bright like a diamond. <laughs> Let your light shine bright like a diamond. And so I always like to start in the text and uh, what you have in Matthew, uh, Matthew from chapter five to about chapter seven. Um, it is what we call the Sermon on the Mount, right? And so in the Sermon on the Mount, I, I like to really point at the Sermon on the Mount because what Jesus did, does is he tries to bring understanding to how we are to live and understand God in our daily activities. And this is why I love the Sermon on the Mount. And, uh, uh, he pulls the demand of God from church. Right, right, right to to our everyday walk of life. And I love how Jesus does this. He brings the demand of God from the outward actions to the inward convictions. And so he moves the demand of God from the outward actions to the inward convictions. And I love to stress, right, that a lot of times what Jesus teaches, it is not a formula for church. I love to stress that it is not a formula for church to have better church, but it is a formula to have a better life. And Jesus stresses the importance Right. That the demand of God must go from an outer ritual to an inner conviction. And so he moves the demand of God on being on the inward man. The outer rituals are only a representation or should only be a representation of the inner convictions. And so what it boils down to, it is that it, it brings an understanding to my mind as far as being a Christian that God wants me to grow internally. I want you to say that and think about that, that God wants you to grow internally. He wants you to grow emotionally. Right. He wants you to grow mentally. And most of all, he wants you to grow spiritually. He wants you to grow morally. And at, at, at this point, I always like to highlight the difference between puberty and maturity. The difference between puberty and maturity is 
Puberty happens on the outside. One growth happens on the outside. Maturity is the growth that happens on the inside. And here's what I love to get. I love to stress this, right? That we have to recognize that puberty does not necessarily mean maturity. I'm going to stress that puberty does not necessarily mean maturity. And that means that you can look grown on the outside, but through careful analysis of the actions, it'll show whether you are actually mature on the inside. And this is why, you know, a whole lot of people you know, when they talk to me and I talk to a lot of uh, young ladies, right? I talk to a lot of older women and same with young men and older men. And one of the things that I've learned, right, is that the older women, some of the older men too, but you know, we a little bit different if I could just be real. But the older women, right, when they look for a guy, they look for a guy who is mature. See, they can recognize, right, that you can uh, go through puberty and look a certain way on the outside, but it's not until I see your actions to where I can tell whether you have grown on the inside, right? And I want to stress that. I want to stress that importance because what Jesus does with the Sermon on the Mount is he stresses, right, that there has to be an internal growth. Puberty becomes evident in my body, but maturity becomes evident in my actions. And a lot of us, right, we have, we we do the, we, and, and let me, let me, let me bring it to, a, let me, let me marketize this right quick, right? We, 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 we look saved on the outside, right? We look religious on the outside, but in reality, our actions and behavior show that we haven't experienced the growth spiritually that is necessary to become, become sons on the inside. And so the point of Jesus teaching is that outward actions mean nothing if it doesn't come from inner convictions. And this is why he says, you have been heard, you have heard that it was said an eye for an eye, right? You kill my dog, I kill your dog. You kill my cat, I kill your cat. And it was Jesus' way of getting them to understand you have the outer rituals right. You can do everything right at church, but while you have the outside right, I want you to get the inside right. And I don't know if that's an encouragement or, or conviction out in a man for somebody tonight, right? You have all of the right things. You know when to clap your hands, right? This past Sunday was Resurrection Sunday. We know that on Friday night, he died on all night Friday, on all day Saturday, all night Saturday. And on early, on the early Sunday morning, we know, right, it's time to clap your hands. You got the out, outside ritual was right. But I wonder how many of us have the inward convictions right. He says, I know you got the outside right. And this is what the Sermon on the Mount becomes about. I know that you can do it right on the outside, but do you actually have it right on the inside? I love it. I love it. In these particular teachings, Jesus emphasizes the Christian faith being expressed. And check this out. In personal relationships, outside of the church. Look, and I know, 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 I know you've been taught and trained that all you got to do is show up at church, right? You got to clap when the preacher say, but early, you got to stand to your feet and say, amen, when the preacher says, but early. But here's what I want to ask you. Have you acknowledged, right, that the gist of your faith comes alive while you're outside of church, right? What if I told you, right, that your faith was expressed in your interpersonal relationship? relationships. That means that God only gives you credit, right, for showing faith with the people who you see and deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. Not while you in church, not for the pastor, right, not for Minister Marcus, not for the people who sit on your row. And some of us can't even get that right. But I want to stress this to you, right, that the brunt of the, the, the major majority of your faith is seen and expressed in your personal relationships, everyday relationships. And this is what the Sermon on the Mount does. It shows you how to show God in your everyday life. In the Sermon on the Mount, it don't talk about worship. It talks about anger and murder. It talks about adultery. It talks about keeping your word. It talks about getting revenge and passing judgment. All of these have to do with personal relationships out side of, oh, y'all got to, oh, I feel that. I feel that. I know you can't feel it. Ouch and amen, right? Personal relationships 
outside of the church. And I want to stress this to you guys. I want to stress this, right? It's all right to have faith while you at church. It's all right to have faith while you in church. But do you have that same faith when you're dealing with the people that you got to deal with every day? If your faith can only be seen at church, it's a good chance that your faith may not be real. You may have a, <laughs> a form of godliness. You may just look the part. You may be a Christian of puberty, but not a Christian of maturity. Real faith has to be displayed in our everyday lives outside of church. It is showing Christianity when dealing with people. And this is what Jesus stresses in the, in the Sermon on the Mount. He teaches us how to be people of Christian morals and Christian character. We don't cheat people or cheat on people, not in church, but in our business dealings, right? In our relationships, we don't cheat people or cheat on people. We don't judge people based on what they look like or how they seem to be. We keep our word and be honest. And come on, I want you to hear this. We keep our word and be honest and giving our word has nothing to do with worship at church. We don't look at people. We don't look to do people the same way that they do us. We're not looking to get revenge or treat people bad, right? This has nothing to do with worship at church. It has everything to do with interpersonal relationships. If you have faith, your faith has to be seen in your everyday life. And I believe that this is a good environment to introduce the teaching that I want to teach you tonight about uh, uh, Matthew 5, 14 through 16. He says uh, before that, he says, you are the salt. And I did. I'm, I'm leaving the link right down in the comments to where you can go to the, uh, the lesson that I did. Uh, don't forget your function. And it talks about how you affect affect what you come in contact with. As a Christian, you have an effect on your environment. If I was to take salt and put it in my soup, the soup don't change the salt, but the salt will change. The, come on. I want you to hear that. I did a lesson on that, right? So I'm not going to go deep into it, but he says you are the salt, meaning you affect what you come in contact with. But here he takes it a step further and he says, you are the light. And I want to stress this about being a light, right? A light is not made to be heard. <laughs> a light is made to be seen. I want to say that again. A light is not made to be heard. A light is made to be seen. Let me pause right here and say this. Maybe you should put less emphasis on saying it and more emphasis on, come on, on doing it. Maybe you should put less emphasis on screaming it and put more emphasis on, <laughs> come on, on expressing it. I want you to get this, I want you to hear me when I say this, that too many of us as Christians put an emphasis on having the right conversation, but not enough emphasis on having the right character. Oh, come on, maybe you should put less emphasis right on saying it and more emphasis on doing it. And here's what I love, right? I love the fact that this is what it says. Look, I'm almost done. We ain't even been on 15 minutes. It says that men may see and then glorify. That men may see and then glorify. That men may see and then glorify. When it is seen, then something happens. When it is seen, then something happens. When you are seen, then the effect happens. I want to get, I want you, I want to stress this to you tonight that maybe the problem is that you're too busy trying to talk yourself into what only actions can get you access to. Maybe you're too busy trying to talk yourself into an opportunity that only your actions will get you access into. Maybe you're trying to talk your way into a better marriage. Maybe you're trying to fuss your way into a better relationship with your children or with your spouse when really you should be focused on the actions that will give you access to the, oh man, I'm feeling that. Y'all got to excuse me. Actions that give you access. And I love to say this, 
you cannot apologize yourself out of something that you behaved yourself into. In the same mindset, you cannot talk yourself into what only your actions can get you access to. I want you to understand, right, that there are some opportunities that open for you because you are putting in the work. There are some things that become available to you only because you're putting in the work. There are some changes that happen to you only because you're putting in the work. There are some transformations that happen through you because you're, come on, I know you're going to say it. Come on, say it with me. Because you're putting in the work. Maybe your marriage has not changed because you aren't putting in enough work. Maybe your finances haven't changed because you're not putting in the work. Maybe your, come on, I want you to hear me. When I, maybe your opportunities haven't been created in business because you haven't been putting in the work. The problem is we are too busy trying to talk ourselves into what only actions can get us access to. And if I could encourage you tonight, the purpose of the light is not to be heard, but it is to be seen. Maybe you will get more respect if you stop talking about it and you start doing it. Maybe you will get better results if you stop talking about it and you start doing it. I like to say, let me marketize that right quick. Stop talking it and start walking it. Stop talking it and start walking it. I got better results in my life when I stopped trying to tell people what I wanted them to do and I start giving them a blueprint or an example to follow. I want you to hear me when I say this. Sometimes, right, you can talk until you blew in the face, but the change doesn't happen until you put some actions behind it. I tell people this all the time. It's all right to think about your dream, right? It's all right to plan for your future. It's all right, but it would only stay a dream until you put some actions behind it. I tell people all the time, let's put some energy on that dream. Let's put some energy on that goal. Let's put some energy on that vision until you put the energy and effort in. It will never change. It will never transform. It will never grow. It will never progress. Maybe you will get to where it is that you're trying to go if you stop talking about it and you start, come on, doing it. Come on, say, I got to do it. I got to do it. At some point in your life, you got to stop talking about it. I told somebody the other week, they've been asking me ever since the beginning of the year, what could they do, right, to change their physique? And I told them everything that you got to do, right? And they said, well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start it next week. Well, I'm going to do it. I'm going to start. I can't do it this way, but I'm going to start at some point, if you really serious about losing weight, you got to stop talking about it and you got to start. Come on. If you really serious about building your finances this year, you got to stop talking about it and start doing it. If you really serious about changing your marriage, about changing your life, about being a better father, a better mother, a better husband or a better wife. If you want to uh, start seeing it right, you want to be a better student, a better employee, a better entrepreneur. At some point you have to stop talking about it and you got to start doing it. Come on, say, I got to stop talking and I got to start walking. It's my time, right, to shine. Come on, it's my time to shine. Here's what it says, and I'm almost done. Your actions, it says that they would glorify God, right, that, that, that they would glorify God, that, that men would see your good works, but then glorify God. And I want to tell some Christian out there this, that maybe the respect you're trying to get with your mouth, you wouldn't have to say nothing if you would just live it. Come on, stop worrying about, come on, come on, just live it. Just be it. My uncle used to say, be what you are and live the life. Stop trying to convince, I ain't got to convince you of who I am if I just be what I am. Look, it, say, it says that men would see your good works and glorify God. And I like to stress this, that sometimes people don't need to preach, but sometimes people need to reach. We have got to stop trying to preach to people and start trying to reach for people. Stop. Oh, man. I, man, I want to stress that, right? I want to stress that because too many times we quick to cite a scripture. What good, this is what J John says, what good will it do for me to tell you, right, that God is going to bless you when you tell me you need a shirt if I got a shirt and I won't give it to you? It's no good for me to quote a scripture if I can't do, come on, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? We have got to stop trying to preach to people and start trying to reach 
for people. Don't focus on learning scripture to quote scripture. Focus on learning scripture to live the scripture. I like to stress this all the time. Too many Christians know scriptures to put scriptures on other people, but we don't learn them enough to live them in our own lives. I'm going to be an example to, because I can show you what the word has done in my life, not because I quoted a scripture every day, but because I activated the power of the principle by living it on the everyday. Stop trying to give advice and start being an example. And it is then once you start doing it, that the effects that happen, it says that they were glorified. They glorify God after they saw the actions. Maybe the person that you're trying to convert will be converted when you stop talking about it and you start living it. Maybe the person that you're trying to change or transform may not respond to you speaking it, but they may respond to you living it and doing it. I transformed the relationships in my life with my children because I stopped talking about how much I love them and I started showing them how much I love them. I stopped talking about what I wanted to accomplish and I started, come on, doing it and I love it. At the end of my actions, the fruit of my labor. And I want you to understand this. Be not deceived. God is not marked whatsoever. A man sow it. That shall he also reap. If you have not sown anything, don't expect to reap anything. And I want you, I want you to hear me when I say that. You got to do it. Come on, say it's my time to shine bright like a diamond. It's 2020. It's time to let your light shine. So with that, look, that was a short lesson, man. I hope I encouraged you guys tonight. Think about the lesson on tonight. Go back and listen to Don't Forget Your Function. These two lessons go hand in hand. It was from last season. I'm going to leave a link down there, but I want you to hear me when I say this. It's time to let your light shine. It's 2020, right? I don't have to talk about it, but I can just let it shine. People will see the difference in how you handle your problems. They'll see the difference in how you handle your stress. They'll see the difference in how do you handle frustration. They'll see the difference in how you deal with people. I don't have to cuss you out to get you to understand my point of view, right? I'll show you how to do it different, how to be different, how to think different, how to act and behave different different. I want you to hear me when I say that 2020 is the year for you to shine bright like a diamond. So with that, man, I hope I said something that encouraged you. I'm sorry if I got a little excited. I'd be trying to keep myself calm, but I was feeling that and I hope you felt it too. Thank you guys once again for tuning in. Please go visit our website. It's called www.thegodmovement.com and it has all of the great and many things. A lot of the things that we were planning on doing had to be postponed, but there are some great things for you. You can go to our website and you can see all of those. Once again, that's www.thegodmovement.com. And I hope, I hope, I hope to see you guys next Wednesday night right here at 830 on TGM television. So thank you guys for tuning in. You guys have a blessed night and I'll see you guys next week. Be on the lookout. I might be having something special for you guys on Sunday morning. So please keep those notifications on, right? Click the bell on our TGM Television YouTube channel. Y'all have a blessed one.